Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I've got a tip today for you, for the, you folks that use a threading jig other than the Baxter jig. One like this that mounts on your banjo. Uh, this one is by Chefware Kits. It's an old, older model. The newer ones look slightly different, but they basically work the same way and, and fit into the banjo. Uh, in addition, it would probably work just fine with the uh, Hope jig. I, any threading jig, those are the only two uh, that I'm aware of, that fit into your banjo. The, pro the challenge you have with these is setting this thing up parallel with the lathe bed or parallel with the spindle. And this is the tip I'm going to show you, how you get it squared up so it will register and you can make changes without losing that registration. I've had one of these jigs from Chefware kits, so probably Gosh, probably almost uh, about eight, eight, eight years or so, and I've been happy with it. I like to make threaded acorn boxes like, like this. And the jig works better than hand thread chasing on, uh, that I found on larger items where the wood may not support uh, hand thread chasing, where it's just not hard enough. Uh, so that's where the jig comes in. Smaller projects, I prefer to use a threading jig. Okay, the way I would normally do this is I would put in a collet, uh, put the cutter in a collet chuck. Uh, this one requires the use of a, of a draw bar similar to this that will, this way, goes to the back of your spindle, threads in here, and then it pulls it in tight. And this, this works fine, it's effective, but since I've got a regular collet chuck that threads on, I really prefer prefer that a lot because this does not require the use of a draw bar and since I have it I always use it so the challenge you have when you go to set this up is getting your work or the jig fasten your work absolutely parallel so you'll get even threads evenly cut on both sides at the same diameter uh, and sometimes I've had a challenge with that. Uh, you can, one way, there's a couple of ways that I did before, and they didn't work as well as the trick I'm going to show you. First, I would get and visually line it up from behind the lathe, and normally I would try to go ahead and square up the banjo using a carpenter's square, so that would be a, a, a reference. Tighten that down. Uh, other ways, I've, I've put this on here as a sight line, uh, but th th from time to time I wouldn't get it exactly right, and so it would cut uneven threads. I lost the sound on some of these clips, so bear with me on this voiceover, but I think you can see here that if you don't have that cutter uh, parallel and your project is tilted a little bit to the left or to the right, you're going to have some uneven uh, threads they might be thicker on one side than the other uh, but worst of all is the two pieces may not square up like this one this one was right spot on uh, but it, it, lining this up will ensure it every time okay so I removed the cutter now let, let me show you how we orient this board uh, we maneuver things in place slip it and the board's long enough to touch on the bedway while we do this so we're going to keep that flat, keep playing with it, and we're going to get that banjo, and I'm going to use this carpenter square along the side of the banjo. After I made this box and got to thinking about it, I realized the easiest way to square it up is bring up your tailstock with a 60 degree cone. That way you can get this thing easily centered exactly, and it makes it easier to maneuver your banjo without worrying about the jig, because the jig, as long as it's under some compression, is going to be flush up against the this board. So now we have the banjo perpendicular, and we have this perpendicular up against needs a little more adjusting. You've got to play with it a little bit, but that's okay. You want it, you want that adjustment to be right. There we go. We got it up flat. Now we go here and we're gonna 
loosen the banjo and adjust it a little bit. So you want to get that banjo perpendicular at the same time that you have this registration uh, against the spindle by using a board. Once you get it squared up, you're going to tighten up the tool post. Now you can uh, shift the banjo out of the way and you think you'd lose your registration but, but here's the beauty of it. Let me go ahead and put the cutter back on there. Now all you got to do is get this lined up properly on the inside in this case female threads and square up the banjo. So by squaring up the banjo again, you put it back in that same orientation because we haven't moved this. We've kept that tight and uh, in lockstep with the banjo. Now once you get that banjo uh, squared up and you tighten it down, then you can go ahead and you can, you can move, move this. You can shift it back and forth uh, to get it, you know, to bring it back up against the wood because it, up to the, it was against the edge of the wood that you're going to be cutting when we did all this registration. So let me show you how this is going to work. Uh, it's not my intent to give you a full video on how to make an acorn box of cut threads, but I want to at least show this as a, a frame of reference for folks that are new to jigs. The cutter we position just outside the wood and and then move our adjustment on the thread depth till we get it right. And then we turn on the lathe. You always keep your left hand onto the chuck. It stabilizes it, reduces the movement, and uh, gives a safe place to put your left hand. <laughs> now using my lung powered air compressor, blow away some of the the chips and you can look at this, uh, the threads and I can see that they're they're too flat they've got to go deeper which is about what I expected because uh, we st we had this only one revolution of thread depth and it needs to go a one and a half meanwhile I'm gonna go ahead and cut the first uh, thread as is and then we're gonna come back and adjust it and cut it deeper I'm gonna pull it back out and start over Picking up that same thread cut. This camera angle uh, doesn't look make it look like the jig is perpendicular to the banjo, but it is. I've cut it about uh, two-thirds of the depth. Now we're going to finish that last one-third. Some folks keep cutting it as they back the piece out. I like to just cut it in one direction. And so now we're going to... The banjo is still in position. I'm going to open... Uh, release that and back this up so I can clear that and now you can see these uh, threads a little bit better again my air lung powered air compressor This gives you a little better idea of what the threads look like here. And then I always put some decoration in the bottom of my large acorn boxes. And those threads look good. Uh, I think I probably would rub a little 400, uh, just touch it up because I've got a fairly, uh, fairly crisp at the top and I'd probably flatten it with 400. Uh, but this is ready to go, uh, ready to measure. Uh, the setting for the bottom uh, of the box. So I measure the inside of the female recess and then I I like to use digital calipers because now I once I get it measured I can uh, zero it out and add that 
factor by just dialing it in that's appropriate for the threads, whether I'm cutting 16 threads per inch or 10 threads per inch as I am on this particular box. Use my little robust. Now, how big does this need to be? You need at least three good threads. Not a whole lot more than that, so that's so just a little less than a third of an inch. And so third of an inch, I guess the easiest way to do that is think about it being 25 millimeter, divide that by three, so it's just about eight millimeter. It's pretty close. You know, this isn't rocket surgery. Now I reduce the the tenon to the size uh, that we measured that should be appropriate and I do several trial fits. This is a box so you got to go back and forth and measure it. Uh, at a recess, I'm using a 16th inch parting tool but I make it about uh, one and a half widths to give myself a little clearance and make it wide enough to be about a tenth of an inch. All right, so now we go back and reinstall our jig. Take this off, off the spindle, remount it on the threading jig. Extending too far, so now I gotta back it, bring it back. Go back and re repeat the same step we did before, reinstalling that board, bringing this up. And squaring up the banjo. We tighten, tighten the banjo up once we get it registered. Now we've got it all squared up. Now we can move the banjo, put in the cutter, just like before. And now we're going to bring this up. We're going to just bring this out a little bit so I can back it off. Just touch the wood surface. And now we got to register the banjo. And by registering the banjo, that means this is in registration. So we lock down the banjo. And now we're going to Back this cutter up, back up the piece just a little bit and set our, our depth, thread depth, which again, uh, like last time, we're going to start with, with two-thirds depth, because these don't have to look perfect, they just have to match, so I don't want to get too carried away. Everything's locked down. In place, keeping my hand on the chuck. We're just going to feed the wood. Because we, we still have that registration based on the banjo, I can move this as long as it touches the wood that re-registers it. So I loosen this, pull it back, and I can examine the threads and just do a, a, a rough test fit and I think it's going to be too small. Okay, so the threads look like it was just about, uh, just about to fit. So. Rather than cut them any deeper, I took some 400 and just slightly rubbed over the crest a little bit. Now I'm going to use just a little bit of paste wax on both sets of threads. And see just how close we're getting to a, a perfect fit. Now comes the test. A little, a little trickier with this chuck. I 
cross thread these things. Perfect. And I got a nice flush. All the way around. Which means we've got our threads parallel with the face. So everything is, is copacetic. So now all I've got to do is take these pieces and refinish uh, finish turning both the top and the bottom and doing some decoration. Okay, I know this tip doesn't help most of you all because most of you don't have a threading jig, but uh, if you've got a threading jig that fits in a banjo, try this tip because I think you're going to like it. And in addition, if you get a uh, threading jig in the future, just remember this video is out there and you'll think, hmm, there was a trick to getting this squared up on Mike's one of Mike's videos. I'll have a link to a full uh, video on making a threaded acorn box uh, above. <laughs> Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.